Hello there, people of YouTube. Uh, today I just thought I decided to uh, do something a bit different from a TF2 video. I know I haven't submitted a video in a while, but uh, yeah, uh, recently I've been starting to make lots of SFM posters, and uh, a lot of people have been wondering how I do it, how I get the uh, to look somewhat realistic. I'll give you sort of an idea of what I have. Oh wait, no, that's not right. Um, 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 I will open up my SFM renders folder and just show a few of the ones that I've made so far. Uh, here's one, um, I'll just cycle through them uh, for a bit. But uh, a lot of people have been wondering sort of how I get everything positioned uh, the right way and um, you know, just generally, just in general, how do you get the SFM posters to look this good? Uh, if I find the one that I am really happy with this one. This one is one of my favorite ones uh, so far. But, anyways, so um, closing all that. All right. Um, essentially, I thought that instead of making a somewhere of a tutorial, I just make an SFM poster right here in SFM and uh, so stream my commentary sort of over that, so that you guys can uh, get a feel for what I'm doing, that kind of thing. So uh, we can start. Uh, first of all, our little settings here in the window that pops up, right, uh, when you launch Source Filmmaker. I just named mine SFM underscore stream. Uh, it doesn't really matter what you name it, obviously. It doesn't really matter what frame rate you have or the directory, but uh, that's there for in case you want it. Uh, I want to find your render later. And of course, the frame rate is for if you're making a video, which we are not, we're making a poster. So why don't you just go ahead and click Create. All right, that'll bring you to the SFM. <coughs> Uh, main uh, interface. Um, so right now I have a certain uh, window setting that gives me two of these viewports. It's going to be, um, if we go to layouts, this will be our motion editing layout. So it's windows, layouts, motion editing, or control F3. That'll get you this thing, sort of. Uh, and it also gets you, so yeah, it'll, it'll get you the whole setup exactly how it is right now. I mean, not minus the scale of each but anyways so right now we'll notice that it says no map loaded uh, so we're just going to right click load a map uh it should probably be a good time for me to mention that you should know basic sfm things uh, you can go through sort of the tutorial that valve has as a very excellent uh basic tutorial on how to use sfm how to move things around move the cameras move the models and all that sort of thing but uh once you know the basics of that thing i'm going to be sort of talking about just how to make the actual poster look good itself. I'm not going to be talking about how to move things around, but I will be commentating on that too. So if something is uh, sort of confusing, I might elaborate on that. Uh, so first of all, we're going to be choosing a map. <coughs> um, uh, it does not really matter what map we have right now, so I'm going to choose CP Badlands, and hopefully SFM will not crash because it has a history of crashing. Ah, right there. So, yes, uh, anyway, sometimes, uh, I mean, a lot of times, SFM has, um, <laughs> it is really notorious for crashing uh, whenever I load some maps, so I'm just going to recreate that and load a different map, I guess. Uh, we can try uh, Arena Badlands, hopefully that won't crash. Um, I'm not exactly sure why it crashes. Um, people have suggested changes such as like restarting Steam, and maybe that will work, or I don't know. But uh, a lot, a lot of times, just like restarting SFM will make it work. But it's still very annoying when it crashes. So anyway, it's going to take a little while to load the map, not too long, but because I have a pretty good computer. But uh, it'll definitely take a little bit of time. So let us just wait. Uh, blah blah. Uh, and eventually the map will load. So uh, essentially, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be making a poster for a demo man loadout that I don't actually have. Uh, we can sort of scroll through the cosmetics and see what looks cool for that. But uh, other than that, yeah. Um, if I use anything that requires a download. Uh, I'll be linking to the download as well. Okay, so here we have it. 
um, we have a main viewport on the screen. Um, some things to note when using uh, Source Filmmaker is that uh, it does uh, heavily require a dedicated graphics card. Uh, if you don't have one of those, some things can get screwed up and the program can run really slowly, uh, which is some of the things that I had issues with when I first got it, so it took a bit to configure. But, uh, but uh, now that it's been configured, it works pretty well. And uh, it's going to be kind of choppy now that I'm recording a video, but hopefully it won't be too bad. Uh, so, <coughs> Alright, so here we have uh, the uh, center point, which is where I'm going to be placing the demo man. Um, uh, obviously you can move around by clicking inside the window and moving around. Uh, you have to be clicking inside the window while you move with the arrow keys, but uh, you should know how to do that. So we're going to head over here to the sunny side. Uh, to place our demo man and the first thing uh, that we're going to do is we're going to create a new camera so if you go down here uh, to this uh, work camera I should say work camera right here we're going to click the arrow right beside it go down to change scene camera and click new camera now it should change to camera one um, we're going to be using that. I like to use this uh, left viewport here for the camera and this one for work camera. If you click uh, this button down here, it'll toggle between camera one and work camera. As you can see, if we're in camera one, when we move it, it'll move both of them. But the work camera is actually a separate camera that you can move around uh, here. So, um, camera one is going to be what you're going to be rendering. Uh, so everything that is displayed in camera one is going to be rendered while uh, the work camera is just usually ma made uh, for moving around while the original camera remains stationary. So let's go ahead and place our demo man first. Um, so we're going to head out. I do not have any water unfortunately. So. Um, we're just going to right click over here in the animation set, new model, and we're just going to type in hwm slash demo dot model. Uh, okay, that'll place him. Uh, if you notice, it'll place him right in front of the camera, and we'll always place him right in front of the camera so it, your, your work camera is safe, but uh, yeah. Anyways, um, all right, now we're going to position him by moving over to the motion editor, or yeah, the motion editor. Um, and then we're just going to uh, click on one of these skills. I actually don't really mind, uh, not mind, but care. I use all these differently. U usually I use the center to move its W and E or, or hockey, so it's move and rotate. But uh, this one's also kind of helpful if you really want it. So we're going to click the demo, get him all selectable. You can see all his bones are highlighted here. All right, so we're just click to here, uh, click the center one here to move him uh, relative to the screen. That is actually very useful uh, to sort of help you move him based on appearance because you want him to look right. So, and then let's rotate obviously, and you can also move it here if you're doing it here. If you click on the center thing, uh, anyways. So, um, click on here, holding shift, that will instantly snap him as far back as you can uh, while still standing on the ground. So you can kind of move him all around, and he'll stay on the ground which is extremely helpful. All right, so we're just gonna uh, do that. Um, kind of place him on the ground. <coughs> yeah, I really sh wish I had water. Uh, anyways, um, so there's a demo man. Uh, we can actually uh, give him an action to do. So we're gonna right click demo man, scroll down here to import and sequence. Uh, and here we get a, our, our sequence importer. You can kind of move the view around with your mouse here, but oh, over here in sequences, uh, you get a whole list of animations, like the reloading animation, blah, blah, blah. But uh, we are actually going to scroll down to taunts. See here, it's in alphabetized order, so you should be able to find it pretty well. Taunt one, uh, you can scroll down th through the taunts, all the taunts, you get that taunt, caber taunt, uh, thriller taunt, that, whatever that taunt is, Islander, you know, all the, I don't even know what that taunt is, I think it's one of the Halloween taunts, anyways, uh, we want this taunt, alright, so, I uh, want to get that all set up, open, and uh, dragging the slider down here, you should see that he does the taunt over and over and over and over and over again, but since we're making a poster, we sort of want him to have a single frame of that taunt, so let's kind of uh, position our camera next to him, and then we're going to find a good frame. You can you can uh, move through the timeline with the arrow keys. Um, I'm going to make this picture actually bigger. Yep. All right. 
that looks like the perfect frame. Yes, definitely. Alright, so there's our frame there. Um, I do believe this is a grenade launcher taunt, so we can have the grenade launcher later. But uh, we can rotate him slightly so he's facing at the edge. Uh, maybe toward the camera a bit. Alright, move him around. And perfect. You know, we'll talk about camera positioning stuff later. Alright, so now with the demon selected and this thing all highlighted in the timeline editor, we're going to drag the playhead slider all the way over to the left, and that will essentially make it so the demo man throughout all time will always be in this stance, which if we play it with the space bar, we can see that he does not change anymore. So, head back to frame zero. <coughs> Alright, now let's give him some items. Alright, so... Uh, first of all, we're going to give him one of the pirate hats. Um, find that a very good resource for this I have in a whole SFM folder. I'll provide links for all of these. Uh, this is going to be uh, in the description. But um, here is a uh, short model. So I actually have this saved locally on my machine because there's a lot of images and it does take a while to load. But uh, So I have this on my machine. It still does take a while to load. Lots of images. But this is uh, going to be uh, a list of every single hat, misc, and item by model name, which are, uh, which is a lot different from the actual name. So if you try to find it, SFM, for example, the steel pipes is called HWN underscore soldier underscore misc1. Like, good luck finding that uh, if you're trying to type in steel pipes. So anyway, uh, we can go down to the demo man one, which is right here. You can find a nice hat, a nice paintable hat, because we're going to want to cover that too. Um, I actually forgot which of these hats are paintable. <laughs> I'm really bad. Um, how about the Hustler's Hallmark? We can Google that. Hustler's Hallmark. <coughs> is that paintable? Yes, it is. So we're going to be using that <coughs> as our domain hat. Uh, that's going to be hallmark.model, so let us load that. Go into new model, type in hallmark, <coughs> and there it is. Open, we'll load it right in front of our camera. Right, what other demo man uh, cosmetics can we have? Uh, we can go to our, the wiki, that's a great place to start. How about the. Dangerous 2. I really like this. I really like that hat. So the Dangerous 2. We don't really need to paint that one. Actually, we can paint that one. It's easy to paint, so. <coughs> uh, we don't need that many miscellane miscellaneous items, actually. So we're just going to do the grade launcher as well. Uh, so that should be 2. Uh, Control F. Dangerous 2. TTG underscore glasses dot model. So. New model. TTG underscore glasses. Alright, and grenade. This one at the very bottom is going to be W models. Uh, you want the W model right here. So there's a pipe bomb. I don't know why the graphics are screwed up on that one, but. Wow, the graphics are screwed up on a lot of these. Huh. Oh well. So we want the grenade launcher. Obviously, or actually, let's have <coughs> the. Oh, where is it? Oh yeah, in this case, there's actually a C variant of that one, which is cool, so... Let's have the uh, Christmas grenade launcher. The festive grenade launcher, actually. Uh, so let's load that. Now we have all of our models loaded, but they're not yet positioned on the demo man. So let's position those on the demo man. Let's open up our work camera here, <coughs> so we can actually see what we're doing. Uh, first of all, we'll do the hallmark. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up the demo uh, tab right here, and the hallmark tab. Uh, and the first thing you're going to want to do is locate all these different joints on the hallmark. We have root transform, bip head, and jiggle one. Um, and then we're going to try to locate, locate those exact same uh, bones on the demo man. So under body, we're going to open up demo's body, and we're going to lock each of these bones to the demo man's bone, except for root transform. So to do that, we're just going to click on uh, bip head, and we're going to drag the bip head of the demo man onto the bip head of the hat. And if you do that, and we notice there's a little lock right here, 
That means it's locked, and that means that uh, that uh, whenever the demo man's head moves, this hat will also move, essentially. All right, so we're gonna open up that unknown. Uh, there is no actual jiggle one, so oh well. Uh, I mean, that just means we're not gonna um, lock it. So we're gonna click on a hallmark, and we're gonna drag the zero slider all the way up. And actually, yeah, actually we don't do that um, because if you notice on this side, uh, if, you, if you click the zero slider, you'll notice that the that the uh, feather actually goes down because the feather is actually that jiggle one bone. So we're gonna want to uh, deselect that. How about we just select the bip head bone and zero that instead? Bang! The feather is now where it is supposed to be. So now that we're only moving the bip head and not any of the other bones, um, yeah. All right. Next, we're gonna do TGG glasses. That's easy. It's just a head one. All right. We can zero that as well. And oh, yeah. Okay. Never mind. Um, shoot, I actually forgot to color them first, and to color them, we need them not to be, uh, locked, so, um, that's actually a good thing to know here, uh, because uh, I have a color script, uh, and I'll explain more about that when I get there, but, uh, it requires that a rig be placed, and, uh, yeah, anyways, all that fancy technical stuff. So anyways, right click the hallmark and we're going to click go down to unlock transforms. That will unlock everything. So we're going to do that for both the hallmark and the glasses. All right, and then we're going to right click it again, hit rig. And uh, I actually have a color script that's called uh, setup model coloring ETA pie side. Um, you can actually find that in the workshop as I believe it's called docs colored script. Uh, I will provide a link for that in the description. So, um, I want to do that. This has a fancy little GUI for painting uh, different colors. Uh, since we're red, let's choose a Team Spirit red, or actually, no, let's do cream. No, Australian gold. All right, and we can choose uh, these. These are more advanced. Uh, it gets pretty. This is, SFM gets kind of technical. Pretty much, I just like to keep it at all. Uh, if it does not, if it doesn't work when you click it at all, you can try the other option too. I'm gonna hit done and bang, it is colored. Uh, there's actually a different way to do that, but this is the easiest way to do that. Once you get, uh, if we ever find something that needs more technical things uh, on it, then I will get into that as well. We're also gonna paint the glasses just because we can. So rig model ETA, and we need to find pink. Done. And so now we notice that the glasses are painted pink, and the hat is painted orange or gold. Sorry. All right, and now we can relock those. Now that we found those, even though they don't really need to be locked, we are just going to relock them. Dragging bit head over to bit head. All right. And finally, the grenade launcher. There's nothing under body, but there is a weapon bone. There are actually quite a few weapon bones uh, for reloading and such. So, drag weapon bone onto weapon bone. Hold up unknown and uh, drag one, two, three, and is there a four? No, there's not a four. So I'm gonna click weapon bone and click all the way down. Everything except for weapon bone four because that's not locked. And then zero that and bang. Now we can head over to our uh, camera and we can see that if we deselect everything, Minimize all these different windows. The demo man now has hats on and a nice grenade launcher in his hand. Um, all right, so we're ready to set up the camera and the lighting and stuff, uh, which is also uh, now going to be pretty. Uh, I'm not going to say. I don't really know how to describe it. Anyways, regardless of what I was going to try to say, shut up, Java update. We're going to set up the lighting and the camera. So first of all, we're going to set up the camera because the camera is uh, one of the most important things in SFM. Um, so um, I'm actually going to be going through a lot of the things that I've seen on uh, other SFM posters and what not to do. Uh, so first of all, I've seen SFM kind of have <coughs> this sort of feel. So it's like, oh look, here is my SFM poster. Look at that amazing loadout. 
right there and if you notice that it is all skewed the grenade launcher is kind of stretched down here and the, there's a bulge right here and it's just not fun and uh, what you need to do here uh, in this instance is you need to zoom out I think out or in I'm not really sure but you need to uh, increase no yeah, no, decrease the focal range. <laughs> Alright, I'm really getting uh, <coughs> messed up that way. You need to decrease the focal range. And it pretty much just means uh, you click inside the window. While you're clicking, scroll uh, um, scroll down on the mouse wheel. And that will essentially zoom in. But uh, if you move back as well, that will make the demo man look much more properly scaled. Uh, so you don't want to zoom in too much because that actually decreases your depth of field. Um, but... Anyway, we're gonna make it good enough. Uh, there we go. So now, as you can see, this demo man already looks a lot better. You no longer have the stretching on the grenade launcher. It just looks overall better proportions and all that kind of thing. Um, all right. Secondly, uh, almost never should your guide be positioned in the center. There's this nice little uh, rule of photography called the rule of thirds. That pretty much just means if you draw <coughs> lines at like the third of um, of your poster you want the highlights to be uh, like on the third not and it's hard to explain you can google it but um, essentially we want our demo man to be off to the side at about the third right here all right that'll give it the most action and the most life and I, I, uh, actually you can already probably tell just by looking I mean I can tell just by looking at it this looks a lot better than that I just shifting the view over uh, and, and that sort of gives us the opportunity to make a lot of, um, uh, to make a lot of, uh, crap, <laughs> uh, background. So we can have this blue background right here if we really wanted to. Um, I'm actually a fan of, uh, below shots like this, uh, where the ground isn't visible, because that actually makes lighting a heck of a lot easier. So maybe we can, uh, modify one of his bones, uh, so let's... Go to demo man uh, highlight one of his bones all right and uh tilt him forward a slight bit uh this might screw up the poster but i'm not no nah, i probably won't then we can screw up his lower arm as well <laughs> i keep saying screw up but it's not really that all right so he's now looking more sort of down i guess toward the camera bit head all right uh, a lot of things here so I, I just right clicked and i clicked on this bone bit head but it selected the ttg glasses instead and that is that can get very annoying you can start editing the glasses instead of the actual head model um so what you can do is you can go here and click this little cursor next to all the models uh all the like the weapons and hats and that will prevent you from selecting them so now our bit head will be on the correct uh demo bit head so we can kind of edit his head a little bit so he's looking more down kind of at the camera i guess all right and oops his arm is now screwed up too so um now we're just going to do some basic posing here hopefully uh, this isn't that difficult but let me kind of move oops kind of move his arm uh we need to position his hand essentially oops we need to position his hand uh, back on his, whatever you call that, plate right there. And I think that looks correct. Um, no, it doesn't. Let's, I'm not really sure how to explain this part exactly, but essentially we're just going to be moving his arm. Hopefully you should know. A bit how to do this um, but all right editing his hand is pretty much editing all of his bones so it looks correct that looks okay I mean for the purposes of this I would probably do a better job lighting it up if it were a real poster but <coughs> okay um, so how about we add um, an unusual effect just because uh, just because I want to, so uh, it's going to be under particle uh, system, so we can do a uh, new particle system, browse, um, it's under item effects, uh, if it's not under particle, uh, if not, if you get, what is it, if you get 
this with no particles, you're going to want to head up to uh, your TF, TF folder. So it's going to be your source filmmaker slash game slash TF slash particles. Oops, not models. Particles. And we're going to scroll over and load item underscore FX dot PCF. And then in there, we'll get a huge list of all of a lot of the particles in TF2. <laughs> uh, most of them are unusual effects. So how about unusual underscore steaming? All right. <clears throat> the duration to 10 seconds each. Uh, particle system lifetime, I'm not quite sure what that does, but I just set to the same time as duration. Seems to do okay, so okay. Uh, it doesn't show up at first, but we're going to position it correctly before we actually do, so. Um, Alright, hitting shift, we can position it exactly on his face, and then kind of moving this over to the um, to this side. We're going to position it near the middle of his head, <coughs> which is where the head bone is, by the way. So we're just going to position it in the middle of his head. Uh, now, the reason the unusual effect is not showing is because it needs to go uh, backward to the start of the clip. So we're going to go to frame negative one and then restart. And as you can see, the steaming effect is now starting to show on the dome man, which is great. All right. So now that we have steaming, uh, we can fix the lighting or add lighting and then uh, edit camera settings. I, I know we're almost to half an hour now, which is great. Yeah, uh, explaining this does take a while, but yes, SFM posters take a bit of time to get correct. So anyways, right click, new light. That'll create a new light right there. <clears throat> um, now here's a little fun trick that I like doing. Um, Dragging the light onto one of the viewports will allow you to control that light as if it were a camera, and this is extremely useful. You can edit the light, you can edit the range of the light, and all that kind of thing, or the focal distance. Uh, anyways, so first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to identify uh, which way the light is coming from. And as you can see uh, by the sort of little glare right here on his foot, uh, I mean on his leg, uh, the light is probably coming from somewhere behind him, kind of up here, and you can see that in the work camera there's the sun over there kind of setting so um for the best effect we're going to be positioning the light in the same in the same place as where the other light has come from doesn't really necessarily have to be uh the exact same place but all right um and that's kind of what i uh what i was referencing when i talked about how I like underside shots like this because if we actually move this up and we get uh, this light here at the bottom, which a lot of times doesn't look good, so I like to light the character only, so we're gonna uh, fix that. <clears throat> Alright, we're gonna edit our light. Uh, as you can see, the light is kind of behind him, shining on, or kind of like right from the side. Like if the camera is facing this way, then our light is gonna be facing perpendicular to that, kind of above the dome, and so we can see it's shining on his hat as well. Uh, and overall, you just kind of tweak it until it gets right, I guess. I can't really describe it. All right, we're going to create another light and drag it on. I'm going to go over to the other side. Um, this is going to be called the rim light, and it is absolutely essential for all of your posters uh, if you want it to look right. So I'm going to move it down more to the underside now because this is where the light's going to be bouncing off. So say the light comes down from here, hits the dome end, but some of it's going to be hitting the floor and then bouncing back. Uh, and so that's going to create this little shine down here on his arm. Um, so we're going to be kind of mo uh, messing with that until we get... This grenade launcher is kind of in the way of his foot, so we can kind of make the light big, but make it closer so we can get it kind of on his foot. But overall, it can't be perfect, so we're just going to keep it like that. All right, you can add the intensities. I like this. Just click on the light. This is the slider right here, uh, intensity. Uh, makes it darker or lighter, however much you like. Just screw around with that until it's nice. Uh, maybe we could add some kind of sun, but you no, know, it, it's not that big of a deal, really. So, anyways, good intensity. Lighting is, uh, I know I say it's not a big deal right now, but it is actually um, it is one of the most important parts of your SFM. If you don't have good lighting, your poster's going to look like crap. And not not crap, I wouldn't say crap, but it's not going to look as good as it can. It's not going to look realistic. Um, 
So proper lighting is good, and you can do that with the, the first main light and the rim light. Uh, there's also something called the um, crap, fill, I think that's what it's called, light. You can search it up. It's called the three-point lighting system. Again, uh, just a lot of things you can Google to help you, but anyways, that's the sort of proper lighting technique. Um, if I do another one of these, then uh, you can... I'll kind of, I might explain it a bit more. Uh, anyways, so now we have the lighting, now we're going to fix the camera, and then we're going to be done with the SFM poster, essentially. Uh, that's all there needs to be, so we're going to create a new animation set for existing elements, and we're going to click camera 1, which will be OK. I click on the camera, and we have all these different settings that we need to um, uh, change. The first one is field of view, obviously, so we can increase or decrease that. But we already have we already have it good because we've done that with the mouse wheel. So next up is focal distance. Um, focal distance and aperture are uh, the second uh, one of the mo more important things, I guess, about SFM because if you don't get that right, things might look a bit blurry or whatever. So. Uh, focal distance should always be right about in the face. So as you can see, it's covering his. It's a bit in front of his face now, but now it's right on his face. Uh, that's pretty much where focal distance. So right down the middle of the demo man should be the focal distance. Pretty much what focal distance does is um, uh, it makes everything behind the focal distance blurry. Uh, obviously, it gets more blurry the farther back it goes, and everything in front of the demo man blurry as well. Uh, and how blurry it is is dependent on the aperture, which usually I set like I don't know halfway between. I know it doesn't really look that way, but I usually <laughs> uh, I measure my things based on like the word length. So I put aperture at like halfway between the side and the actual word aperture, which I know doesn't actually follow when you're you stretch it out, but it it's a it's about right. Anyways, so halfway between this and the word aperture, um, it, it really just depends. If you want to see that in action, you need to go back to the um, clip editor, which is over here. This clip editor, which unfortunately you can't edit it, but now you can actually see sort of the blur, and then you can you can increase if you increase it all the way, you can tell things get really 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 blurry here on the back. But you, the demo man is in focus. So we're just going to unblur that. I don't like to have my aperture that high, but anyways, you can experiment experiment with it, see what looks right. Anyways, um, next up, tone map scale. All right. Increasing that will increase the whole brightness of the entire map, and decreasing it will decrease the brightness of the entire map. This is uh, kind of useful for creating dark scened maps. Um, but as a word of warning, uh, particle systems, or so if we have the steaming particle system, that will not actually be lit if we turn down tone map scale, which is extremely annoying, but unfortunately that is the way it is. So, tone map scale I usually leave alone. Alright, bloom scale. This is nice. It allows you to increase the bloom. And, um, yes, anyways. Uh, you can do that in TF2. Uh, as well. Uh, it makes the game look really awesome. As you can see, it's kind of glowing now. If we decrease bloom scale all the way, nothing will glow, but we want some things to glow, so I usually leave bloom scale alone as well. Alright, now we have SSAO or ambient occlusion. Uh, we have SSAO bias, strength, and radius. Uh, those are all kind of things that are weird. It's it's hard to explain, I guess, but I usually just fiddle around with it because I don't exactly know exactly what they do anyways, so kind of just fiddle around with it until it looks right. So we're just going to uh, right-click here in the viewport and click Render Settings because we want our render settings to be uh, high, pretty much. Um, so what we're going to do here uh, is under progressive refinement, we're going to make sure that this is checked. All right, under depth of field, we want our number of settings to be um, something high. You, do, you don't want it to be low. You want it to be, uh, I set mine to 256, but obviously the higher uh, number of samples you use, the better looking your poster is going to look, or the more crisp, I guess, your poster is going to look with the lighting and stuff. I choose something like 256 because it does take a long time to render if you have it as a high number, and I like to do multiple edits, sort of, so if I actually screw something up, then I can just re-render it, and I don't like waiting forever. All right. Secondly, since this is a poster, you're going to want to turn off motion blur because if you have that on, it's going to make the poster look like crap. 
because your poster is going to be uh, moving and are, or uh, if you don't have the playhead, sorry, if you have moving objects in your poster is going to look like crap because the objects are going to be blurred but it's just going to be an image so just turn that off whenever you're doing a poster uh, as, a gen as a general rule. Alright, ambient occlusion is next. You can create some pretty cool effects if you choose um, like outline, AO and outline. You can create some cool cartoony effects like that. But we keep it at, I, I usually keep it at AO only, obviously, because I'm trying to make realistic looking SFMs, not really cartoony SFMs. Uh, so, when we're, so when we're configuring our ambient occlusion, we're just going to check this box down here, show ambient occlusion. That is going to turn um, the uh, screen into sort of like a black and white grayscale image that only shows the model and the shadows projected on the model, essentially. So, um... Uh, we can edit the SSO bias. As you can see, it kind of changes the map uh, a bit. Usually I'll leave SSO bias alone and only uh, mess with SSO strength and radius. So first I'll deal with, uh, ra uh, oops, first I deal with strength. Strength, as you can see, will make the shadows more dark and defined. Um, I usually leave it somewhere in between. As you can see, you don't want the edges of the demo man to look dark because then that will contrast with the background and we don't want that at all so we want it to kind of be as dark as we can get it without making the edges I don't know, it, it's really up to like where you have the position in and sort of how it looks to you I guess and then radius is kind of different you can kind of put it anywhere I usually just increase it a little bit but it's a it, once again it's up to you um, up to what looks good in your specific poster. So right clicking render settings, turn off ambient occlusion, and now we have everything pretty much complete for the render. So heading over to file, export, poster, we're going to save our file and we're going to render it as a PNG. You don't have to render it as a PNG if you like the format JPEG. Uh, or TGA. If you like the format TGA better, I do not recommend saving it as a JPEG because obviously JPEGs have compression and they'll make your photo look not really that crisp. Alright, so just PNG, click export poster, and that will take a while to export the poster. Um, one of the things you need to sort of have in... <laughs> They're screaming outside of my room, but uh, one of the things you need to have in mind is that the actual, when, when you click export poster, it's not actually going to export it exactly the way it looks in your frame, which I find kind of annoying. Um, if you want to do that, as you can, it's still rendering, but it's, yeah, there we go. Yeah, it kind of froze there for a minute, but um, if you want it to look exactly like in your poster, you're going to want to do export, I believe it's image... No, it's not an image. I forget. It's, it's it's export movie, and then you change this to custom frames. You select the frame that you want, so like zero to one or whatever. Um, and you change this to just image sequence PNG. And unfortunately, you can't you can't change this higher than 720p, which kind of makes it annoying but anyways we're not covering that we're just covering posters so opening up our renders folder whoop <clears throat> all right this is a uh, source filmmaker game user mod elements renders and you can see some of my recent renders that i've made that i haven't really moved to my SFM folder yet but opening up poster.png we can see that we now have a high quality image of the demo man doing his uh taunt with the grenade launcher um hats are painted lights look good um, that is what I would call a uh, complete poster. So, uh, thanks a lot for watching this uh, how to make a poster video. Uh, this is actually going to be in the beginning of the video. <laughs> Anyways, um, I may do more of these in the future. Uh, and I may live stream, so uh, I'll put a link to my live stream in the chat. You can uh, subscribe or follow or whatever you do. I don't know how live stream works, but anyway, I might be doing some live stream and be commentating while I do commissions or whatever, but uh, anyways. So, that is essentially how you, or how I made uh, these SFM posters. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. And I will see you next time.